Are we really living in the end times? The visions hidden in Revelation are not mere ancient symbols, but prophecies that reveal signs of the last days visible in the world today. Many avoid the topic out of fear or ignorance, but what do these revelations mean for us now? Global chaos, crises, and even human behavior have already been predicted. Finding out what these prophecies say about the present can transform the way you see the future. It is curious how many move away from this topic, perhaps out of fear or because they think they are old and irrelevant stories. But what if I told you that these signs are not just premonitions, but a roadmap of the events that are unfolding right now? The book of Revelation, written by the Apostle John, is one of the most intriguing and profound parts of the Bible. John, exiled on the island of Patmos, received these visions at a time of persecution against Christians, which makes their context even more significant. Imagine an elderly man, removed from social life and isolated on a desert island, being chosen to receive apocalyptic revelations that would change the way humanity sees the end of times. This scenario not only reinforces the power of these visions, but also invites us to reflect on the meaning of hope in the midst of adversity. The main message of Revelation revolves around the revelation of Jesus Christ and the promise of victory for His Church. Amid apocalyptic visions and revealed prophecies, the book reveals a clear purpose to show that, despite the signs of the last days and the crises that seem inevitable, there is hope for those who stand firm in the faith. John presents us with a glorified Christ, no longer the humble carpenter, but the triumphant King who rules over everything and everyone. For the modern reader, this reinforces that even in times of uncertainty, faith can be the encouragement to overcome challenges. Understanding Revelation is like breaking through a code full of symbols and profound messages. Throughout the Revelations, John shows us that behind each catastrophe and conflict described, there is a greater purpose aimed at redemption and righteous judgment. As we begin this journey, it is important to remember that Revelation is not just about destruction, but about the outcome of a divine plan that culminates in a new beginning. And this is just the first of many discoveries that await us as we dive into this book full of prophecies and signs of the end times. The Vision of the Glorified Christ, Revelation 1. When John receives the vision of the glorified Christ, he depicts a figure that is majestic and terrifying at the same time. Jesus appears with an appearance that carries a deep symbolism, eyes like a flame of fire, feet like polished bronze, and a voice powerful like the sound of many waters. Every detail of this description is not only aesthetic, but has a spiritual meaning that reveals his power and authority over all things. These elements symbolize Christ's purity, judgment, and majesty reminding us that He is the sovereign judge who sees all things and holds supreme authority in heaven and on earth. What also stands out in this vision are the messages addressed to the seven churches of Asia Minor. Each letter carries both warnings and promises, showing that the issues addressed are both historical and prophetic. Churches symbolize different kinds of Christian communities with challenges that still resonate today, from the loss of first love to the danger of spiritual complacency. This practical application makes the revealed prophecies not only for the distant future, but have immediate relevance. Therefore, it is an invitation to reflect on our own faith and the signs of the last days that may already be before us. As we look at the seven churches, we realize that these messages transcend time. They teach us that faithfulness, even in the midst of persecution or indifference, is what Christ values. In each card, there is a promise to those who endure to the end, reinforcing that despite trials, there is an eternal reward awaiting. The vision of the glorified Christ then becomes not only a reminder of his authority, but also a call to vigilance, perseverance, and hope in times of darkness and uncertainty. And this is only the first of many apocalyptic visions that John will yet reveal. The Throne of God and the Lamb, Revelation 4-5. When John is caught up in spirit to heaven, he describes a breathtaking scene, the throne of God surrounded by heavenly beings, elders, and a crowd worshipping incessantly. 
The vision of the heavenly throne is a demonstration of God's absolute power and holiness. Lightning, thunder, and a sea of crystal-like glass convey the grandeur and reverence of the environment. For Christians, this image serves as a reminder of divine sovereignty in the midst of the chaos of the world. Even as the signs of the last days intensify, God's throne remains unshaken. In the midst of this heavenly vision comes the highlight, the Lamb who was slain but lives. He is the only one worthy to open the book sealed with seven seals, which sets in motion the apocalyptic events that will follow. The Lamb represents Christ, whose death and resurrection guarantee not only the redemption of mankind, but also the final victory over evil. At this moment, the scene changes from silent worship to a universal cry of praise. This reinforces that despite the revealed prophecies of destruction and judgment, the central focus remains on Christ's victory and hope for those who follow his light. By reflecting on this vision, it becomes clear that Revelation is not just about the end, but about the beginning of a new era where Christ reigns supreme. The throne of God and the Lamb point to the certainty that even when apocalyptic events unfold, the end result is restoration and the victory of good over evil. Thus, this heavenly vision not only reveals the divine plan, but also offers an anchor of hope for all who persevere through trials. And there is still much more to be revealed in the next chapters on the signs of the last days. The Seven Seals, Revelation 6, 8-5. As the Lamb begins to open the seals of the book, a terrifying sequence of events is unleashed. The first four seals bear the famous horsemen of the apocalypse. The horsemen of conquest, followed by the horsemen of war, the horsemen of famine, and finally the horsemen of death. These knights represent destructive forces that manifest themselves throughout history and in the last days reminding us that human power, as dominant as it may seem, is vulnerable in the face of divine judgments. What John saw in his apocalyptic visions reflects realities that even today can be perceived in wars, food crises, and epidemics. With the opening of the following seals, we see the cry of the martyrs, those who were killed for their faith, asking for justice. This scene highlights that Revelation is not just about physical catastrophes, but also about a spiritual battle that takes place behind the scenes. The great earthquake that accompanies the sixth seal, along with cosmic signs of darkness and falling stars, marks a dramatic change, as if the universe itself is reacting to divine intervention. These events reinforce that God's judgment encompasses all spheres, the physical, the spiritual, and the cosmic. When the seventh seal is finally opened, there is silence in the sky for about half an hour, a moment of pause before the next judgments unfold. This silence can be interpreted as the calm before the storm, a preparation for the even more intense events that will come with the trumpets. It is a solemn reminder that what is to come will be decisive in the history of humanity. The sight of the seals makes us reflect on how every aspect of creation, from earthly conflicts to heavenly mysteries, is connected to God's greater plan for the end times. And the revelations don't stop here. The seven trumpets, Revelation 8, 6 and 11. With the sounding of the trumpets, the earth begins to face a series of judgments that directly impact nature and humanity. The first trumpet brings hail and fire mixed with blood, ravaging the vegetation. The second turns the sea into blood, destroying marine life. The third contaminates fresh waters, bringing bitterness. And the fourth darkens the sun, moon and stars, plunging the world into darkness. These apocalyptic visions remind us that at the end of time, even the most stable elements of creation will be shaken. For those who observe the signs of the last days, these events symbolize the fragility of the system in which we trust. The role of angels in Revelation becomes even more evident here, for they are the ones who, with each trumpet blast, trigger divine judgments. These angels are not mere observers. They act as agents of God's justice, bringing to light the consequences of sins accumulated throughout human history. It is as if each trumpet blast is a final warning alerting mankind to the seriousness of the revealed prophecies. For the attentive reader, this is a call to reflection. Are we prepared for the times when the heavens and the earth will begin to give way under the pressure of judgment?
However, the trumpets are not only a warning, but also a demonstration of divine patience. For despite their severity, there is still an opportunity for repentance. Before the final judgments, God in His mercy allows the world to see the signs and have a chance to turn to Him. But as John's visions make clear, many will continue to be hardened, pushing ever further toward destruction. And these trials, while already impressive, are only a prelude to the even more intense revelations to come. The events in heaven and earth, Revelation 12, 14. At the heart of the apocalyptic visions, John presents us with a cosmic drama involving a woman, a dragon, and a spiritual battle that unfolds in both heaven and earth. The woman, usually interpreted as God's people, is about to give birth while the dragon, symbol of Satan, tries to devour the child. This powerful image reminds us that behind the visible events in history, there is an invisible war going on, where spiritual forces fight for the fate of humanity. This battle reflects the constant resistance of evil against divine plans, something that continues to echo until the signs of the last days. As the narrative progresses, we are introduced to two beasts, one that emerges from the sea and the other from the land. These beasts, along with the false prophet, form a satanic trinity, a parody of divine powers. They exercise global domination, deceiving the nations with signs and wonders, demanding worship, and imposing the famous mark of the beast. For many, this is seen as a symbolic representation of the corrupt systems and regimes that oppress humanity. In practical terms, these revealed prophecies are a reminder of how evil can camouflage itself as something beneficial, but actually promotes destruction and deception. Yet in the midst of all this chaos, John also gives us a vision of hope, the Lamb standing on Mount Zion, accompanied by those who have not surrendered to the beast. This shows us that despite the temporary dominance of the evil forces, there is a faithful remnant that stands firm. This image is an encouragement to persevere, even when apocalyptic visions seem bleak and the signs of the last days point to difficult times. The narrative is far from over, and there are even more revelations that show how the divine plan unfolds until the final outcome. The Seven Bowls of God's Wrath, Revelation 15:16. With the seven bowls of God's wrath, judgments reach an unprecedented level of intensity. Each cup spilled marks a stage of progressive and irreversible destruction, beginning with painful ulcers on those who worship the beast, through the turning of the waters into blood, to the burning of the planet under a scorching heat. These apocalyptic signs demonstrate God's justice, revealing that there is no escape for those who persist in rebellion. It is as if God's patience has reached its limit, and now the final judgment begins to manifest itself in a direct and relentless way. As the cups continue to be poured out, we see a world collapsing. The fifth bowl brings darkness over the kingdom of the beast, while the sixth paves the way for the battle of Armageddon, bringing together the kings of the earth for the final showdown. The stage is set for the climax of the story, where good and evil will face each other in a decisive clash. For many, this event is seen not only as a physical battle, but also as a spiritual one, symbolizing the culmination of evil forces and God's final intervention. For the attentive reader, this is a reminder that while evil may seem to prevail, the outcome is already determined. The pouring out of the seventh bowl marks the ultimate end. Thunder, lightning, and an earthquake so powerful, it destroys entire cities. It is the ultimate expression of God's wrath against a world that has rejected His grace. Yet even in the midst of this utter destruction, there is a message of hope. The fall of these evil systems paves the way for Christ's restoration and reign. The vision of the seven bowls is not only a story of destruction, but the preparation for the beginning of a new era, where divine justice will prevail definitively. And the next step will lead us to understand how this victory comes to fruition. The Fall of Babylon, Revelation 17, 18. Babylon, described as the Great Harlot, is one of the most powerful symbols of Revelation. It represents global corruption, the anti-Christian system that extends across all nations, luring kings and peoples with its riches, lusts, and false promises. 
John describes this city in detail, showing it adorned with gold, precious stones and pearls, sitting on many waters. Her influence is so great that she intoxicates the nations with her wine of fornication, leading them to idolatry and to turn away from God. However, despite its grandiose appearance, its fate is already sealed. In his apocalyptic visions, John reveals that the fall of Babylon will be sudden and devastating. With the sound of a single judgment, its destruction will be total. Like a stone thrown into the sea, it will disappear forever. The merchants, kings and powerful who once benefited from its opulence will mourn its ruin but will be powerless to prevent its collapse. This event is not just the destruction of a physical city, but rather the end of an entire world system that opposes God's values. In the signs of the last days, this fall symbolizes the cleansing needed before the kingdom of God is fully established. The Lamb's final victory over Babylon carries with it a message of hope. Evil, as entrenched and powerful as it may seem, is not eternal. Babylon's judgment shows that God is in control and that at the right time, all corruption and injustice will be undone. This outcome, however, is only part of the larger plan, for the fall of the great city paves the way for the events culminating in Christ's second coming and final restoration. The stage is set for the triumphant entry of the one who will bring with him the definitive victory and the beginning of a new chapter in the history of humanity, the second coming of Christ, Revelation 19. The vision of Christ's second coming in Revelation 19 is grand and triumphant. John describes a knight, faithful and true, riding on a white horse, whose eyes are like a flame of fire and on his head are many crowns. He is the word of God, the commander of a heavenly army, coming to judge and war with justice. The contrast between this image and the first coming of Jesus is evident. No longer the humble servant, but the glorious king, prepared for the final battle. For those who eagerly await the end times, this vision is the certainty that evil will finally be defeated. As the rider advances, the narrative leads us to the marriage of the Lamb, a heavenly celebration that marks Christ's eternal union with his church. This festive image contrasts with previous judgments, bringing to the fore the reward for those who remained faithful. The feast symbolizes the joy and eternal communion between God and his elect, a promise that suffering will come to an end and that victory is assured. This union is not only spiritual, but also points to full restoration, where there will be no more pain, tears, or death, only life in abundance in God's presence. The second coming of Christ is not only a vision of victory over evil, but also the beginning of a new era. With the battle over, the stage is set for the Millennial Kingdom, where Satan will be imprisoned and peace will prevail. But before that happens, it is necessary that all evil be exposed and eliminated. This is the inevitable conclusion of the divine plan, a perfect justice, where every action will be rewarded or punished according to the truth. The prophecies revealed here prepare us for the climax of history, where God's ultimate purpose will be fully realized and the world will finally see the end of time. The Millennium and the Last Judgment, Revelation 20. After the second coming of Christ, John leads us to the vision of the Millennium, a thousand-year period in which Satan is imprisoned and the earth experiences peace and justice. During this time, Christ reigns with the saints who have endured to the end. This era of tranquility is marked by the absence of evil where divine justice prevails and God's plan moves forward without interruption. The millennium is a foretaste of what eternity restored will look like, offering a glimpse into the future where harmony and truth rule. However, this calm is only temporary as evil will still have its last attack before the final judgment. As the thousand years come to an end, Satan is released for a brief time, gathering nations for one last attempt at rebellion. However, this rebellion is quickly crushed by the fire that descends from heaven, ending once and for all the power of evil. With Satan's final defeat, John leads us to the great white throne, where all the dead, great and small, are judged according to their works. Here, the book of life is opened, determining the eternal destiny of each individual. This is the moment when the choices made during life find their ultimate consequence, where the wicked are condemned to the lake of fire and the righteous enter eternal life. 
the Last Judgment is not only a scene of condemnation, but also of redemption and restored justice. It reveals the seriousness of God's plan and the need to live with purpose and righteousness. This view reminds us that the end times are not just about destruction, but about restoration and the beginning of a new era. With evil finally eliminated, the preparation is complete for the new heavens and the new earth, where the entire creation will be renewed. The history of humanity, marked by conflicts and fall, is about to be transformed into a story of victory and definitive redemption. The new heavens and the new earth, Revelation 21, 22. The vision of the new heavens and the new earth in Revelation 21. 22 is the climax of the revealed prophecies, where God finally restores all creation. John describes the New Jerusalem, a resplendent city coming down from heaven as a bride adorned for her husband. This city is the eternal abode of the saints, where there is no more pain, death or mourning, for all things have been made new. God's presence is constant, and He Himself wipes every tear from the eyes of His children. This apocalyptic vision reminds us that at the end of time, after the judgments and battles, true peace will be established, and perfect fellowship between God and humanity will be restored. The New Jerusalem is described in stunning detail, streets of pure gold, walls of jasper, and gates made of pearls. The city is illuminated by the glory of God, and there is no longer any need for sun or moon, for the Lamb is its light. The river of the water of life flows from the throne of God and of the Lamb, and on its bank grows the tree of life, the leaves of which are for the healing of the nations. This description symbolizes the abundance, purity, and eternity of the new creation. It is an invitation to imagine a place where all that was corrupt and imperfect has been transformed into absolute beauty and holiness. Eternity with God is not just a distant concept, it is a concrete promise that the plan of redemption culminates in a life of fullness and endless fellowship. Apocalyptic prophecies from the beginning point to this final restoration. Yet even with this glorious vision before us, the text makes it clear that there is still a choice. Those who wash their robes in the blood of the Lamb have access to this city, while those who persist in rebellion are left out. History comes to an end, but with a new beginning, where God's eternal purpose is finally realized, and hope becomes reality. What remains for us now is to prepare for this encounter, living with faith and vigilance. The call to hope and faithfulness, Revelation 22, 6, 21. In the last verses of Revelation, John makes a powerful and urgent call, a call to vigilance and perseverance to the end. The message is clear, Behold, I am coming quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the words of the prophecy of this book. This final exhortation is not only a warning, but also an invitation to hope. Amid the apocalyptic visions and signs of the last days, the purpose of the entire account is summed up in one fundamental truth. Christ will return, and those who remain faithful will experience eternal victory. This promise should guide us in our daily choices, keeping us mindful and committed. The invitation to repentance and eternal life echoes vividly in these closing verses. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come. It is an open invitation full of grace to all those who thirst for the water of life. This opportunity for salvation is available as long as there is time. But the text reminds us that this time is limited. The prophecies revealed in Revelation are not only to satisfy curiosity about the end times, they are a call to immediate action. For those who listen, the time to decide is now, to choose to follow the Lamb and prepare for the encounter with the Lord. Even as Revelation closes with a message of warning and hope, the reader is invited to keep his gaze fixed on the promise, he who testifies of these things says, surely I am coming quickly. With this, the text says goodbye with the prayer that spans the centuries, Amen, come Lord Jesus. This expectation is the fuel for a life of faith, courage, and commitment. The journey described in Revelation may seem daunting, but it is ultimately a journey toward redemption. The final call is for all to stand firm, with their eyes fixed on eternity, until the great day when the Lord will return to restore all things. What will you do with all this knowledge about the end times? The prophecies revealed in Revelation are not just warnings, 
but guides for living with purpose and wisdom in the last days. How have you prepared yourself to face the challenges and signs that are already around us? Think, is your life aligned with what has been revealed, or do you still ignore these warnings? It's no longer a question of if or when, but how you'll react. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications to continue learning how to apply these teachings and prepare for what's to come.